In this lesson, we'll be looking at proofs that certain numbers are irrational. Let's start off with the definition of rational. Rational simply means that the number can be written as a over b, an integer over an integer, and we insist that the denominator is not zero. If you have a number that's not rational, this is what we call irrational. Basically, the rational numbers are the decimals that can be written as fractions, and the irrational numbers are the ones that cannot. Now, one of the things that we know about our fractions is that they can be written in simplest form. Here's the official way to word this. Given some rational number r, you can find a unique pair of integers a and b, with b greater than zero, a and b having no common factors other than one, and r is equal to a over b. So you can assume that the denominator is positive and that a and b have no common factors other than one, and that puts it in reduced form. Here's the first statement that we'll prove. This is a classic proof that no math major should exit a program without having seen. The square root of two is irrational. For all proofs involving irrational numbers, we generally use contradiction to show that it is irrational. So for our contradiction, we will make the opposite assumption. Assume square root of two is rational. Since it's rational, I can write it as a fraction, but I'm gonna write it as a fraction in simplest form. Then square root of two is equal to a over b, for a and b being integers, with b being greater than zero, and a and b having no common factors other than one. Square root of two is written as a fraction in simplest form. Now what we'll do is we'll square both sides to try to start working with this equation a little bit. Let's get rid of the square root. Squaring both sides, we get two is equal to a squared over b squared. Now let's clean that up a little bit by multiplying both sides by b squared. So a squared is equal to two b squared. Now let's take a look at this equation. We've got a squared is equal to two times something. Now that something is part of the denominator, but what I wanna point out is that this means that two divides a squared. Thus, two divides a squared. And now from here, it actually turns out that two divides a, since it divides a squared. The main reason for this is the fact that two is prime. If you ever have a prime number dividing a power, then the prime actually divides the original number. This is more due to the fact that if a prime divides a product, then it must divide one of the elements in the product. So, since two is prime, we get two divides a. Now since two divides a, we can use the definition of divisibility to rewrite a. Then a equals two k for some k in the integers. So what we'll do is plug that back in to this equation. a squared equals two b squared. So two k all squared is equal to two b squared. Now let's simplify this a little bit and see where we can get. Simplifying, we have 4k squared equals 2b squared. So, then dividing by 2, we get 2k squared is equal to b squared. Now this is actually almost done. Take a look. We have 2k squared equal to b squared, so we get the 2 divides b squared. And this will be similar to what we did a minute ago. Hence, 2 divides b squared, so 2 divides b using the same logic as we used for two dividing a squared. But now look at what we just found. I had two divides a, and now I showed two also divides b. But a and b didn't have any common factors other than one, there's our contradiction. This means that a and b have a common factor other than one, that's a contradiction. So what we did was we contradicted the fact that the fraction could be written in simplest form. But every fraction can be written in simplest form. Therefore, the square root of two is irrational. And that's the end of our proof. Now that previous proof might have been a little bit lengthy. So you might think that this proof would be even harder. But it's actually quite similar 
and easier for that matter. We'll again use contradiction. Assume 5 plus the square root of 2 all over 3 is equal to a over b for a and b being integers with the denominator not equal to 0. This time I don't really have to assume anything related to simplest form. I'll just keep it simple here. Now let's try to manipulate this a little bit. Observe the following. The first thing that I'll do is cross multiply this expression. Now let's distribute the b. 5b plus square root of 2 times b is equal to 3a. Continuing onward, let's subtract 5b. And then finally, let's divide by b to get square root of 2 by itself. Square root of 2 equals 3a minus 5b over b. Now what did I just accomplish? If you think about it, I get an integer over an integer. So what I just showed was that square root of 2 is rational. Wait, what? We just proved that the square root of 2 is irrational, so we actually just arrived at a contradiction just like that. Thus, the square root of 2 is rational, and that's a contradiction. Therefore, 5 plus the square root of 2 all over 3 is irrational, and that is the end of our proof. Last example. The log base 3 of 5 is irrational. Again, let's proceed by contradiction. Assume the log base 3 of 5 is equal to a over b, for a over b being in the integers and b being positive. I am assuming a small part of simplest form here, but I don't need to assume that a and b have no common factors for this particular proof. I simply just need to assume that the denominator is positive. Now let's use one of the rules that we have for logarithms to rewrite this. Then 5 is equal to 3 to the a over b power. Basically rewriting this in exponential form. And then let's simplify this a little bit by raising both sides to the power b here. So 5 to the b equals 3 to the a. Now I want to note one thing. b was positive. So 5 to the b is an integer. We know that a is positive because if we look back at our original equation, b was positive. We can put in our calculator the log base 3 of 5 and see that that's positive. So because this is positive and this is positive, we know a is positive. Note that a is greater than 0 since log base 3 of 5 is greater than 0. So, a is greater than or equal to 1, and that means 3 to the a is greater than or equal to 3. What am I getting at? 3 to the a is an integer, and it's at least 3. That means that 3 divides 5 to the b. Thus, 3 divides 5 to the b, and now we can use the same argument that we did in the square root of 2 proof. I've got a prime number dividing 5 to a power. So, 3 divides 5. Yeah, that's not true. That would be a contradiction right there. 3 definitely does not divide 5. There's our contradiction. Therefore, log base 3 of 5 is irrational.